Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I have another Math in the Garden activity to share with you. This book has been such a treasure in our homeschooling library. It's all about math and garden work and it does a fantastic job integrating the two together. Today we're going to be working on the activity called Measuring Length. This activity is for ages 5 to 13 and for this project you're going to need your garden journal and at the beginning of this book there is a tutorial on how to make a garden Garden journal and that's the first activity we did when we got this book so my two kids and I each have a garden journal I also have a tutorial on how to put this together and this is where we are going to document all of the projects that we do for our math in the garden series now I have videos and tutorials for all of the lessons that we have done so far and you can check that playlist at the end of this video so we are going to set up our chart first and just write measurement off to the side. We also need some string and a ruler for this project. And of course you need some fruit or vegetables. So we're just going to write in all of the fruits and vegetables that we're going to use and a little chart that shows the length and the circumference. Now we went ahead and harvested these fruit from our local grocery store because our garden in the backyard had very limited selection of fruits and vegetables and that's okay. This is one way that this book can be used even if you do not have a garden. So my son went ahead and measured the length of the pineapple and now he is measuring the circumference and then we are using the ruler in order to find what that length is and then we went ahead and put all of our measurements into our chart for all of the different things that we chose. The next part of this project is to find the median and to do this we needed to arrange all of our fruits in order of length first and then later in order of circumference and that way the middle one is the median. So we went ahead and wrote that down and then we came back in and did the same project and this time we ordered them by circumference and that way we could find the median which was the middle one and we went ahead and wrote that one down as well. The next thing we had to do was to find the average or the mean and this is something that an older student can do and this is what's really great about these lessons is that there are so many different activities that you can do that meet a variety of age range and grades. So my youngest daughter who's six would enjoy doing the measurement but my son who is in fifth grade can easily do some of the other math. All right, so as we've been doing with most of these lessons in Math in the Garden, we are adding some artwork to this. This is completely optional. Your lesson could be over after you did your math, but we have really been enjoying adding a little bit of art to our activities. So I'm going to pencil in about five or six different fruit that we took measurements for. And my son is not with me right now, but he will come in afterwards and use my sample as an example so that he can copy that into his own workbook and then of course we are going to be watercoloring these as well. Now we are using distress inks rather than distress ink pads for this particular project. They are the same it's just rather than an ink pad they are in a liquid form in a little bottle. However working with the paper which is drawing paper has proved to be a little bit challenging with the watercolors because it is not watercolor paper and I know for a fact that the next time we put together a garden journal we will definitely be using watercolor paper because the drawing paper absorbs the water too fast and then it doesn't allow you to really move the watercolor around. It absorbs really quickly and it also ends up staining the back side of the paper and sometimes it bleeds all the way through to the next paper underneath. Now the watercoloring part of these projects happens to be my favorite part. I really love seeing this come to life. It adds so much to our projects and it's really great to look back on. And that's one of the biggest values of having a notebook like this is that the learning continues long after the lesson is done. And that's when your child comes back to look at his work and review his work and admire the work that he's done. All of that increases the lesson and the longevity of the information kind of sticking with your child. 
So we're going to finish up this watercolor drawing. And now the math lesson itself is not completely over. This happened to be the first time my son was doing mean and median, which means that this information is going to have to be revisited later. But I have to say that this is the first time that the idea of median really made sense to me. Every time we have done this with numbers, it has never made as much sense as when we actually lined up the fruit and found the middle one. So don't underestimate the value of these hands-on projects and understanding math concepts. They really do work. Now, if you would like to see the complete playlist of all of the activities we've done for the Math in the Garden series, you can tap on the screen right now. And don't forget that you can check out our projects on a daily basis by visiting me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.